Thank you, President Wyatt. I'd also like to thank Coker College, the Board of Trustees, and the faculty for the honor of letting me speak at your graduation. I know I don't have the expected job titles, the career, the amount of gray hair or the lack thereof, the number of Twitter followers expected to speak to you on your special day. But we do have a shared experience. I graduated from Coker 21 years ago this month. My uh, postgraduate days is officially old enough to drink now, which is odd. I was the head commissioner, I played soccer for the Cobras, and I took cow days more seriously than most. I tried to make contact with the ghost, Madeline, and I had way too much fun at the Cobra Den and the boathouse. And other side of Davidson here, I once even uh, streaked to the bell tower on a very, very cold October night, which was apparent to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the credentials I present to you on your special day. I once heard a, uh, a unique outlook that we're all the same person, just traveling along different points of the same road. Well, I've walked where you've walked, and perhaps the steps I've since taken might be on your road as well. So I'd like to share a bit about my path and what I have found along the way. Let's start with the step you're on right here, right now. As I look out at all of you, I ask, just who do you think you are? You see, I used to see that as a rude question, but now I understand it's one of the few that matters. When I look back at my college days, Learning who I am was the most important accomplishment. Sure, there's power in the paper you're about to receive, and you have learned the skills in your chosen profession. But look at it like a runner. All of this knowledge will help you, just like a runner knows how to stretch, how to properly breathe and hydrate and pace themselves. All of this helps them go the distance. But it won't answer where to go, how far, and why. Now that why, that's the kicker. Your degree will not motivate you. It won't tell you if you're going the right way. On my path, many times, I've come to a fork, and I'm not sure which way I should go. There have been times when the hill seems steep, and I'm tired, and I just don't want to go on. And it's been by looking inward at who I am, where I have found my compass, I found my way. And that is the greatest gift I got from Coker. And by you choosing Hartsville over the immediate hustle and bustle of life, you too have taken the time to invest in yourself to figure out what you are about. You do know what you're about, right? Okay, one last homework assignment and just to take this to the conscious level, I ask that you actually write down today who you are, what you're about. It doesn't need to be long, uh, a tweet will do. In fact, let's all use the hashtag who I am, and that way we can share with each other how we define ourselves. Now, if that gives you pause to share this personal statement with the masses, well, you've got to get over that or else let the world define you, because it will. You've already experienced family and friends telling you who you are and what you should be. Well, that's gonna get a lot worse. The entire world will question you, doubt you, including yourself. On my road, I've been tempted to compromise on my morals, to let slide my work ethic, to lower my standards. To give, ground, to give ground on what I deserved. I find myself offering excuses for behavior that was once an affront to my integrity. Now that you know who you are, you have to be the champion of your authentic self. You gotta fight to keep this ideal person that you are today. 
Okay, I, I recognize some of the, your faces saying, you know, know who I am, I'm graduating college today and, and I don't even know what I want to do. Well, that's the easy part. You just start walking and you'll get somewhere. But what if it's a mistake, you might ask? What if it's the wrong path? Well, when I was a few years out of Coker and I was working a job in Atlanta, I decided to take a new path. I saved my money and, and went and studied film at the University of Southern California and then worked my way into the film industry. I produced and directed my own film, my greatest creative achievement. I then married my girl of my dreams and worked in the industry uh, until my son was born, at which point I moved back to Georgia for another path, this time living in suburbia, raising a family and working at CNN. So did I choose the right path going to LA? Well, my new wife was surprised to find out, of course, after we got married, that I was about 30,000 in debt. Uh, and that was to pay for that film I directed, which still has not been shown to anyone. I didn't achieve the dreams that took me out there. I didn't become the next Steven Spielberg. My work in the industry, it didn't help my resume back east, my job prospects. And I, we found ourselves raising my son in the town I grew up in, where my childhood friends had now had a 10-year head start, head start on us in, in their career, in their house payments, in everything that goes into making a life. But each of them, each of them, I kid you not, told me they were envious of me. They each had their own dreams they wished they chased, adventures they wished they went on, and now they were so tied down by obligation and responsibility, they couldn't see a way to make that happen. So I'm thankful I took my path. I got to live. And life after that, the, the road that we're on now, which is raising kids and stuff, it's a slow burn and it is full of joy. So I don't mean to slight that one bit. But many of you are hitting the most liberated time of your life. Most of you do not have the anchors of responsibility that come with job and marriage and children. I mean, you are educated, a college graduate, and likely in the best shape of your life. All right, well, you are in the best shape of your life. It's all downhill from here. The point is, carpe diem, seize the day, as you will not get these days back. Okay, I see, uh, I can see you. Uh, some of you got your phones out. Uh, I can't really advise you on the social norms of this. We as a society are all grappling with what we should do with this new addiction and when it is or is not appropriate, like for instance during a commencement speech. But let's go with it. This is your graduation and you should have a moment to enjoy it. So if you want, let's go ahead and take our phones out, take a selfie or two, take a photo of your classmates. I'm gonna take a few shots as well. I'm gonna tag these uh, also, hashtag who I am, so feel free to go online and, and grab them. Take one or two of your colleagues. Thank you. So uh, a couple things about that. First, uh, the world is evolving really fast and it's hard for us to keep up with it. And in many ways, you guys are the experts on things like these. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the social networks that you guys are already abandoning. So uh, we really need you to lead the way with this technology and how we should use it and when we should put it down because we don't know. Uh, and that's one thing you'll find out in the world is that we don't know what's going on either. Um, and then the other thing is, in my road, I, I have found it easy to identify the miserable people that I've met on the road of life. And they are the ones that are trying to control everything. Like this Instagram moment we just shared. 
sometimes you just have to let it go and just, just go with it. Why try to control the waves when you can ride them? All right, there's one more step that I'll share, and I'm sorry if I'm going too long. I know it's not that hot, um, or at least not here. Uh, that I, one more step I want to share that I've taken that I think many of you will experience because it's part of that shared experience, and in this case, Coker is to blame. Next month, I will mark my 10th anniversary at CNN. When I started working there, I arrived with my excitement and my enthusiasm to make a difference, and that was immediately met with the wait and see. Like the rest of corporate America, they wanted fresh ideas and innovation. However, by the time it would take for me to get in a position of enough power and influence to be able to present my ideas and to have a voice, I would have been so, it would have been so long and I would have been so beaten down by the system that my ideas would have been like everyone else's. I would have effectively drank the Kool-Aid. Well, you know that would not do. My time at Coker College would not allow that. As you well know, you are not allowed to be passive here. You are to be active. You have chosen a college where you're not lectured at. Instead, you sit around a table and put forth ideas and debate the subjects, and you get into it. Well, so I remember the first time I went to the executive morning meeting at CNN. I asked if I could go during my schedule, and I was promptly told no. However, I was quickly then put on overnights, and I was then able to attend because it started an hour after my shift was done. And so I show up to this big conference room, and there's this big round table with chairs around it. And there was a good number of chairs also placed back along the walls. And then there were a few giant screens, video conferencing, similar rooms in Washington, D.C. and in New York City. Well, I quickly took a seat at the table and met the VP sitting on either side of me. And then my boss walked in and his boss walked in and they both sat where they usually did in the chairs along the wall. Well, the meeting got started and there was a discussion about something happening in the news and how we should cover it. And I interrupted someone to make a point. You see, one thing that Coker gave me was the belief that I have a seat at that table. I have a voice. And because I believed it, others did too. Now, did it rub some people the wrong way? Of, oh, yeah, of course it did, especially the guy I interrupted. But I was lucky. I made a good point that day. And what's one thing I picked up in L.A. is that you can talk to anyone once. Just once, though, sometimes. So you got to make sure you have something worth saying. But the, what gave me the guts to stand up and talk was the fact that that's what I just how I thought it was done. I went to Coker College. So I was now off my career path. I had the urge in me to do great things at my company and the foolish belief that I could, which made a dangerous combination. As there was not an opportunity to make such of a difference at my current level, I joined it joined like-minded colleagues and we started pre-production on our own CNN content until legal found out. Uh, but then we took their red tape as a path to legitimacy and I soon became chair of the new business resource group that we called NextGen. There was also a senior ideation team for new projects and I started attending their monthly meetings, uninvited of course. This put me in a position to take the lead on a new, a new initiative called Impact Your World, and, and my career has taken off from there. So my path's kind of been a unique one and not always successful. When people ask me how I was been able to get so far and do so much, I tell them my secret to breaking down walls. You have to bang your head against the whole length of it until you find a weak spot. Yeah, it's funny, but it's also true. I averaged 20 failures for every success. But if you go off the road, you will fall in some holes. You will lose your way. You'll hit some dead ends. But from each, you'll learn to find your way. I have not met one leader I admire who's gotten there through a traditional path. I tell you this because I want to encourage you to go off the path as well. 
blaze your own trail. We need that too. We need you to be the change agent to the world. And you can't do that by repeating our footsteps. You've got to find your own way. This is your time, and we have faith in your inner compass that you will find your way. We look upon you today, and we know who you are. You are the graduating class of Coker College. We, we applaud you. you.